What is up everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? Today is Saturday. It is June 29th. Right now it is 12.30 p.m. And we've got two lonely souls. There are two lonely souls right now in chat. We've got R Gambo and we've got VR Spry Guy. I'm guessing that F Reality is still going on because I thought F Reality would probably be a three hour podcast today. I assume that that would probably be the case. And I know that MRTV is doing a live stream at 1 p.m. in about a half an hour from now. So there's just too much crap going on. There's probably other live streams, other videos that I don't even know about. And Tough Titty said the kitty till the milk ran dry because you know what? I got to do this show because I've got other stuff I got to do. So sometimes you just got to bang out a show. You got to deal with it. Other people got other shows going on. Oh, well, it is what it is. All right. So what do we have on the docket for today? And basically, I've got two new games that I've never heard of before that I have brand new trailers for them. They have brand new Steam pages. They are coming in the very near future. So we've got that to cover. Also, yesterday, I watched MRTV's live stream. I didn't watch it when it was happening, but I watched it later. Uh, I was having some dinner and I thought, well, you know, let me hop over to MRTV and see what he did in relationship to the Valve Index. And he did a live stream where he was hopping in and out of different games. He was comparing a lot of different things about the Valve Index, his first impressions on the Valve Index. I thought it was pretty good. I actually, I thought the live stream was pretty good. I was entertained by the live stream. Now, were there lots of little periods of time where... You know, he's kind of like fumbling through menus and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, th there was some dead air times where he wasn't doing anything. But overall, I was very entertained by MRTV's live stream. And you know what I did is I grabbed four, like four or five different clips of that MRTV live stream. And I've edited them uh, down into little bite-sized chunks and I thought we could go over that as well and kind of look at what MRTV, what Sebastian was thinking about the Valve Index. It's pretty much all over the internet right now. I mean, that's all anybody's talking about. Valve Index, Valve Index, and a little bit more Valve Index on the side. That's basically what's going on right now. But why don't we take a look at a couple of these new games that are coming out because I thought they are interesting. In fact, Aerobots VR looks pretty goddamn good. It, it looks very impressive, actually. So why don't we go to that Steam page first? We'll start off with that. So let's bounce over to the Webinal. And here it is, Aerobots VR and uh, Robotic Aerial Combat is what we're talking about here. Take to the sky, blah, 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 blah. start over. Take to the skies and drop them like flies. Take to the skies, ladies and gentlemen, and drop them like flies in this multiplayer arena shooter built from the ground up for virtual reality. Fly with unbridled freedom. We don't always hear the word unbridled, not very common, right? Fly with unbridled freedom with the most streamlined movement controls in VR. Unleash the fury of dozens of futuristic and heart-stopping weapons and pickups to blaze your way to victory. So yeah, this game is called Aerobots VR, a multiplayer arena style shooter. Uh, the game features a very intuitive form of natural locomotion. Your hands become thrusters, which are pointed in the desired direction of travel. Fly at blistering high speeds in all directions. 20 plus unique weapons and power-ups. 10 plus maps featuring a, a diverse style of futuristic settings. You got a lot of different game modes like deathmatch, team deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and Gun Game, uh, single player, co-op, etc., etc. So a lot of stuff going on here. And if we take a look at some of the screenshots, they've got a lot of screenshots here. Looks pretty good. Like, see that screenshot right there? Does that look familiar? 
Does this look familiar, ladies and gentle bots? That was the background of, and, and you know, there's lots of different backgrounds I could use. Look at like a lot of beautiful screenshots here. We've got 26 different screenshots that are featured on this Steam page. And this looks like it's relatively decent quality, especially if you are a Space Junkies lover. If you're a Jet X type of a guy, this may be your bag. Like this could be in the mix as a very interesting, I mean, look at how beautiful and colorful and vibrant everything is. You're kind of floating around on jetpacks. You're having battles in the skies. That's what this is all about. Um, it's going to be, and also check this out. This is coming to early access for 15 bucks, 15 bucks, 14 99. It is coming to early access for $14.99. Now, we don't have an exact release date here, uh, but I, I think this might be coming this summer. But let's check out the trailer. I think the trailer looks freaking pretty good as well and impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and pump the volume up on Star Child. Will we ever see Star Child? That might be the bigger question of the day. Will Star Child ever see the light of day? That's a good question. But I'm going to pump up the volume on this Star Child thing, and we're going to check out this Aerobots trailer. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, I'm pumping that puppy up, and let's grab us some Aerobots. Aerobots unite. Here we go. You are now in service to the Orange Conglomerate. Please defer all complaints to the Department of Conflict Resolution. Markets are open. Torch Crypto Bank is ready for action. We're making it rain! Send back up. I'm Not a combat model. Not a combat model. Going down. No, no, no. Over the line! Gotta. Shovel it in. Recycle. You don't seem to be a good fit for our corporate culture. <laughs> wow! It's a bull market, baby! Don't lose our investment! I am a sacrifice. Leo! You are the hammer to crush the enemy! Die! This ain't no place for a camera foot. Get out there and take them down. The agronomy directorate is in need of resources. We must turn our plowshares back into sorts. By preserving nature and the ways of old, the Plowshare Foundation will make a better world. Yum, 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 let me get some. That's it? <laughs> they are so tough. We need your parts for scrap. Terrorize. Brutalize. Colonized by you. Might want to grab a drink and a snack. All right. Well, that is Aerobots VR, which is going to be coming at some point in this year. It does have a Steam page already. Let me bounce back over to the Steam page here. Okay. So, Northwoods Interactive is a developer. Let me go ahead and click on them real quick. Yeah, we don't have any other games by Northwoods Interactive. Never, ever heard of. Northwoods Interactive. But I got to say, this trailer looks good. This is what you need to do. If you're an indie developer, if you're a relatively small developer and you got a VR game, I can't even explain to you how important a decent trailer is. A decent trailer can be a major difference maker in whether or not your game is going to get some hype and is going to have some excitement as it nears its launch and if people are going to be pining for the game. I've seen some pretty crappy trailers in my day. Good games, like literally good, solid games with craptacular trailers. And then we've seen bad games that have really good trailers and trailers are important, and this is a good trailer. And we're watching this trailer, and there's 10-plus maps that are going to be featured in this game. And we're getting a sample of the different maps. 
And I got to tell you, a lot of different environments, a lot of different looks. I mean, you got like forest levels, you got outer space levels. It all looks really good. Robotic aerial combat. So it kind of seems like we basically have a situation here where we've got a new genre that has developed in VR. And I don't know exactly what we're going to call this genre, but it's kind of space junkies, Jet X, like Echo Combat. Um, it's, it's basically like you're floating in the air. You can go in any different possible direction. So 360 degree movement, aerial combat, you're floating around. I believe you can play with up to eight people at a time in this game. So possibly two two teams of four or possibly free for all where it's you against seven other people. There is also co-op. There is also single player. I don't know how the single player, I don't know if the single player is just bots or they somehow have developed some type of missions and stuff. But I got to say, you know, I don't know diddly squat. When I woke up this morning, I had never heard of Aerobots. Now I am aware of Aerobots, and this looks pretty darn good. And we're going to have to get this on VR Game Rankings. We're going to have to rank this as an upcoming game on VR Game Rankings. I think it looks pretty goddamn sweet. So that is Aerobots VR. It could be a complete another dud. Of course, obviously it could be a complete and utter dud, but I do feel like it actually looks halfway decent. Okay, so we've got another game that is coming to VR. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Now this one, much more indie, like way more indie. It also starts with an A. In fact, maybe the same exact number of letters, A something VR, um, another developer I've never heard of in my life, but let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now, way more indie, way more indie. So we got to understand that. Let's bounce over here. And it is called Anticorpse VR. Never heard of it, right? Well, one of the things that I do every once in a while, I hop on YouTube and in the YouTube search, I will put VR and I will put trailer. VR trailer and then I filter the search for today and I'm looking for VR trailers that popped into the mix today and Anticorpse VR was one of those trailers and I watched a few minutes of it and I was like ah oh, this looks very indie but it also looks kind of bizarre and kind of interesting in certain ways. So let's we'll check out the trailer here in just a second. This is going to be coming out on July 30th of this month. The developer is Development Unreal Creative. Yeah, never heard of them either. And here's what it says about this game. Fantasy and Unreal Universe for a fun and spectacular strategy game. Miniaturized in a sick body, use the field to create colonies, collect resources, and make fixed defenses to protect the antibody. You will have weapons. Disinfect all. Oh, so this is like going into the body. This is like your battling this is almost like uh what was that movie where they like injected you into the bloodstream their uh microcosm or that was a video game right way back in like the multimedia days there was a game called microcosm where they sent you into the bloodstream and you were basically like this little miniaturized ship that was going through the bloodstream so anti-corpse is a strategy game management Tower Defense VR. Humanity is threatened by a new type of infection which does not kill people directly, but drives them crazy. The earth is plunged into chaos, faced with a threat of a new kind. No treatment, no medicine can stop the viruses. Urgent, urgently, the global health agency has developed a new technical something to try to treat the sick. The player is miniaturized in a medicine swallowed by the patient. Once the infected zone is found, the drug unfolds, but the antibody is not yet active. It will be necessary to use the terrain to uh, created by the drug to create a colony. <laughs> this is crazy. It's a crazy idea. You know, I'll give them some love on the idea and the background concept of the game. But why don't we go ahead and check out the trailer for this uh, Anticorpse VR bouncing back over here. So I'm going to pump up the volume on Aerobots. 
Uh, we'll pump that volume up and we'll check out Annie Corks. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Yum, 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 let me get some. That's it. Corks. <laughs> they are so tough. We need your Okay, so that is Anticorpse VR, and I gotta tell you that logo, that logo needs major work. And this is definitely an indie ass indie game, but it's unusual, it's vibrant, it's different. It's, you know, sometimes it's nice to have something different. Now, the big question when something like this is gonna arrive, which is coming on July 30th, is just how janktacular is this going to be? How unpolished is this going to be? The UI does not look very good. And so if it's clunky, if it's hard to deal with, this could be problematic. But it also could be a potential diamond in the rough. For those of you out there that are a little bit more adventurous and you're willing to look for some different kinds of things anyway, brand new trailer, brand new game on Steam, definitely not going to be ranked very high on the VR Game Rankings uh, Most Wanted Upcoming Charts, but does look kind of interesting. You know, strat uh, tower defense, real-time strategy kind of a game here where you're inside the body does look kind of different, does look kind of unique. Okay, so why don't we go at why don't we go ahead and get into some of this Valve Index discussion and let's talk about MRTV and his live stream yesterday because I thought there were some interesting things that happened here with MRTV and I've grabbed four different clips, four or five different clips from MRTV's live stream where he was testing out the Valve Index live. And it's a long live stream. It's like two something hours and it would take you a while to go through all of that. But it is worth checking out if you've got some extra time here. But I went ahead and chopped it into uh, some very specific segments where we can kind of see what Sebastian is talking about. So why don't we go ahead and check out our very first clip. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume up on this Anticorpse VR. And we're gonna grab the first MRTV clip here. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab that. Okay, here's the first clip. Let's see. Let's see Beat Saber. Oh, wow, there's crazy glare going on now. Crazy. Wow, the Beat Saber logo. Wow. For the Beat Saber logo, I just had the glare all over the place. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I need to test more games. So, so what the glare is concerned just now, it was a bit scary, I must tell you. Wow. Okay, so, yeah, that is the very first clip. And I was watching this and I was kind of surprised because um, he was trying some different things out in the very beginning. And I believe one of the very first games that he went into was Beat Saber. 
And when you first load up Beat Saber, that Beat Saber logo is floating out there on the background. And really all you have in the very beginning is you just have that Beat Saber logo that is floating out there. And he was like, whoa, whoa, wow, the glare from this Beat Saber logo, a bit out of control. So that was one of the first takeaways that I saw on this live stream. Uh, this was to the negative side of the coin in regards to glare, in regards to God rays. This is uh, a weakness, you might say, for the Valve Index. The Valve Index has some absolute strengths, no question about it. It also has a handful of weaknesses, and that was one of the things that he highlighted here when he first saw that Beat Saber logo. Okay, so that is clip number one. Let's go ahead and grab clip number two. Let's see, clip number two for MRTV. Now this clip is a mic test. This is the microphone for the Valve Index. And this was a pretty interesting test right here. And let's go ahead and check this one out. I'm not using the headphone. I'm not using the mic of the, of the, um, of the Valve Index. I'm using my own mic right now. But you know what? Actually, I can change that so we can check out the mic now. Oh, this is amazing. So we can check out everything here. So now, so actually I was, I'm wearing like a little um, wireless mic, but let me, let's do the mic. Let me change the mic now. And let me do that now. And I'm changing it now to the mic of the Valve. Here it is. All right, test one, two, three. Let me make this a bit louder. Test one, two, three, okay. So now I'm using the mic of the Valve Index. Test one, two, three. So let me know how does the mic of the Valve Index sound? How does, wait a moment guys, wow, so many things to do here. How does the mic of the Valve Index sound? So let me, let me put this back. So now, now I'm wearing the, now I'm wearing the Valve Index just like I'm supposed to wear it. And I want to know how does the mic of the Valve Index sound? Sounds good. Great mic. Okay, great. Better, 10 out of 10, wow. Yeah, okay, so that was a quick sample there. He was using like a little lavalier mic uh, when he started this broadcast, and then he was like, well, hey, why don't we check out the mic of the Valve Index? And he switched over to the mic of the Valve Index, and I was watching this live, well, not live, but I mean, I was, I was watching this whole thing, and when he got to this part, and I was like eating dinner or something when I was checking this out, and he switched over to the Valve Index mic, and the difference was freaking ridiculous. The Valve Index mic is fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. This is a crowning achievement for Valve, and I can tell you as a YouTuber, I'm not like a big time Let's Play guy. I haven't actually done a Let's Play in quite some time. I need to do some Let's Plays. Actually, you know what I'm thinking of trying to do, guys? Now that I am on Twitch, I might start doing some gameplay streams. You know, just doing some streams rather than um, some Let's Plays as much. But mic quality for a YouTuber, it is a very big deal. Like the Rift S... The mic on the Rift S is kind of garbage from what I've heard from most people out there. The mic on the Rift S, not very good. In fact, there's a lot of people out there that are doing Let's Plays on their Rift S and they're literally using a different mic. Like they're putting a mod mic on the side of their Rift S or they're using a completely different mic for their Rift S and it was a downgrade. You know, it's a downgrade in terms of, of mic quality. 
The Oculus CV1 has pretty decent mic. I remember because I was on the HTC Vive and I did a number of Let's Plays on the HTC Vive. And then when I switched over to the Oculus CV1, I noticed the mic was maybe a little bit better than the HTC Vive mic. And so that was kind of a nice bonus. But it does seem to be the Valve Index mic is like the best, the best mic of any VR headset, bar none. I mean, absolute crystal clear. The clarity is quite next level. In fact, he's switching it right here. Let's now. take a quick listen. And I'm changing it now to the mic of the... Of the? Of the? the valve. Yeah. Here it is. The valve. <laughs> here it is. All right, test one, two, three. Let me make this a bit louder. Test one, two, three. Okay. Sounds good. So now Sounds I'm using the mic clear. of the Valve Index. Test one, two, three. So let me know how does the mic of the Valve Index sound? Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, that sounds incredible. Like, he should have been using the Valve Index mic from the very beginning because it sounds absolutely great. So that is a beautiful thing. And it's, it, it's a very smart play by Valve, you think about it, if they have the best mic on the Valve Index, think of all the YouTubers, think of all the people that make videos and stuff. If you're a content creator, you know, if you're Mike from Virtual Reality, if you're Nathy, if you're uh, Tyrell Wood, like any of these people out there that are constantly doing videos and they're doing lots of Let's Play videos and stuff like that, if you've got an outstanding microphone that is built into the headset that you're using already, that is a hell of a bonus. And so I got to imagine the Valve Index is probably going to be the daily driver for a. Then there goes the whole daily driver thing. Yeah, the whole day. That's my daily driver. But it's probably going to be the daily driver for a lot of these YouTubers because it's just a bonus. You don't got to worry about using a different mic. Your built-in mic is a great mic. That is a beautiful thing. So much love on the Valve Index from that standpoint. So that was uh, about the microphone. Okay, so the next clip that we're going to go to here, this is a little bit of a longer clip. And in this clip, it lasts almost two minutes, this clip here. And in this clip, I'll go full screen on this one. In this clip, he's playing some Arizona Sunshine and he's talking about the Rift S. And he's making comparisons about God rays, about the overall visual quality, about the sound quality. At the very end, he also talks about the regular Vive and the Vive Pro. And he's making some comparisons here. Uh, a little bit of a longer clip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume up on this mic clip. And we're going to switch to clip number three. I want to know, how does the mic of the Valve index sound sounds good great mic okay great better if i compare the god rays between the rift s for 399 dollars and the valve index for the complete package thousand dollars the rift s has less god rays than the Valve Index. Wow. Interesting, right? Should I say this again? Rift S has less God rays than the Valve Index. Without a doubt, like with, without any doubts, the FOV is, is way better than the Rift S here in the Valve Index. So without a doubt, without a doubt, the audio is way superior. The audio is way superior than Rift S. The audio is amazing. In terms of graphics, yes, this is also, I would say it's better than Rift S. It's, it's a bit better than Rift S. But are, is it like, again, is it like double, expen double as good as Rift S? No. It is without a doubt, it is a, it's a good headset for sure. So is this an upgrade <laughs> from 
from your wife? Of course. Of course. It's a huge upgrade from your from your uh, from your wife. There's no question about it. Yeah, so that is um, another clip that we had there. And I love that thumbnail. Oh my God, I love that thumbnail. That was such a good idea when they had that Swee Viver uh, MRTV episode and he did the Step Brothers thumbnail. Just classic, man. Really love that. Okay, so in this clip, he's talking about a number of different things. Now, he starts off at the very beginning and he's talking about the God Rays again. And he does say that the one advantage, like if you were going to compare the Rift S head to head with the Valve Index, is there anything about the Rift S that is superior to the Valve Index? And I think there's two really big things that jump out. Obviously, $300. $99, $400 compared to $1,000 if you have to get the full bundle. That is a $600 price difference. That is redonkulous. I mean, it really is. That is a major, major difference. So advantage to Rift S over there. Then you go to the God Rays. The Rift S, apparently, according to Sebastian, the Rift S has the advantage on the God Rays. Now, after that, it seems to all go to the Valve Index. He started talking about the FOV. And I don't have a very specific clip. Um, I didn't have enough time to go through that entire live stream and, and um, isolate when he was talking about the FOV in some different parts of his live stream. But he did talk about the FOV. And he basically said, look, the FOV is bigger. It's significantly bigger than the Rift S. It's bigger than the Samsung Odyssey, which he believes has a little bit bigger of an FOV than a lot of the regular headsets out there. And bigger than the Vive, bigger than the Vive Pro. Now, somebody in chat was saying, hey, wait a minute, Sebastian. Yeah, what about if you use a Vive and, and you're using like one of those two millimeter face gaskets? Is this really much of a difference there? And he was like, okay, yeah, maybe not as much compared with that. But the vertical, the vertical FOV, you're definitely getting additional vertical FOV. And he talked about the horizontal FOV. And he's saying you're getting a little bit extra in the horizontal FOV. You're getting quite a bit extra on the vertical FOV. And so while not while nowhere near Pimax, Pimax absolutely without question still has the FOV advantage. But if you take the Pimax out of the consideration, this definitely has a bigger FOV than all the other headsets. And Sebastian was saying, you know what? I think I could live with this. I think I could work with this FOV. I think this is... It is adequate. This is up to par. You know, this maybe not as big as as not not as wide as the Pimax is going, but it's up to par. It's a solid FOV. And so that's kind of his thoughts there on the FOV. Then he talked about the sound. And there were some different different parts of his live stream. He was talking about the sound. He was playing Beat Saber with the volume really cranked up. Uh, and, and he was trying some different things. And in this game, he also was like, wow, the sound is really good. So the sound, those off-ear speakers that are kind of floating outside of your head, that appears to be a major advantage over basically every headset out there. Like every headset out there. It's obviously a big advantage over the Rift S because you got to add your own headphones. Um, Pimax, it's an advantage. It's basically like that's one of the main things that the Valve Index has going for it is you don't really need to grab some headphones like this. So you don't have that two-step process. You got those little speakers that are hovering off your ears and the sound is high quality. So that is a good a good aspect right there. And then he talked about just general visual quality compared with the Rift S. And he said that he would give it a little bit of an advantage, not like a night and day kind of advantage, but definitely a little bit better on just the overall graphic image quality of the Valve Index compared to the Rift S. And then at the very, very end of that clip, he was talking about the Vive. Somebody was like, is this an upgrade over the Vive? Is it not even an upgrade? And he's like, no, no, no. This is an upgrade over the Vive. It's an upgrade over the Vive. It's an upgrade over the Vive Pro. 
On the negative side of the coin, though, he did go back to the pricing discussion, and he kind of was openly asking and inquiring like, well, you know, I mean, this is $600 more than a Rift S. It's better than a Rift S. Is it $600 better than the Rift S if you had to get the entire bundle? And then he also went into like a disclosure situation where he's like, look, I've got my 1.0 base stations. And so all he had to do is he had to buy the headset and he had to buy the new index controllers. It was like about 800 bucks or whatever that was. Um, around 800 bucks, and so then the comparison's a little bit different. But I think we do have to compare apples to apples here, and you got to assume that somebody is starting off with nothing, and so that that then becomes that $600 pricing difference. Uh, let's see what some folks are talking about here in chat. Ah, oh, you know what? Something weird is going on. I cannot pop my chat out, which is freaking bizarro world. I do not know why I can't pop my chat out. It is bothersome to be sure. But let's see what some folks are talking. So I got to look at chat right here. Okay, Gaming Science Teacher says, Yeah, Valve is making a lot more in each index than Facebook on each Rift S. And Facebook is probably making little to nothing on Quest. We don't really know. We don't know what Valve is making on these things. We got, You know, one of the things we have to back up and consider here See, at first blush, you think like the Valve Index is ridiculously expensive because it's like, God damn, $1,000? $999 for the full bundle, right? That is crazy expensive. Here we are. It's three years later and people are getting their Valve Index and they're not necessarily raving and saying, oh my God, this is a night and day difference. I instantly noticed the difference. This is a game changer. I mean, some people are saying that, but a lot of people are saying it's more subtle. You know, it's more of a subtle difference. And so the price seems like kind of dramatic there, right? But if you think about just the headset by itself, like is just the headset by itself $500? Or is it $600? I can't remember. Is a, is a headset a la carte $500 or $600? Because if somebody like just wanted to get the headset and nothing else, it's not that expensive. It's actually kind of a value almost when you think about it right there. But that kind of like clouds the entire issue, the fact that you could just get the headset for not that much. So I don't know that they're making like a great profit off just, just the headset by itself. Jarillo says, the Vive Pro Clarity looks better than the Rift S. I have both. The Index, I don't have it, but will look better than both as it's 3K RGB. Um, and Punk O says, if you pop your chat out, I'm leaving. Well, popping out the chat is like, so when you're on YouTube, like it, there's this little thing where I, I have to pop the chat out so it goes into OBS. And then usually I would have my little popped out chat over there and I can scroll up and down really easily. Okay, so Oliver D says, my index arrived without face gasket. What the, that is bizarre. That is truly, how could that happen? How does something like that even happen? So he says, my index arrived without the face gasket, so I'm furious. But I tried it out anyway, and it is really nice. Not wow nice, but just, just that you want to play VR in. Um, okay, so God, that is, that is really bizarre. Push the button says push the like button. And you know what? I can't, I can't argue with that. Uh, VR Spry Guy says $500 is a good price for the... Yeah, if you're just getting the HMD by itself, it's actually kind of a value. Like, it's not that bad. Shurzad Khan City. You know, I haven't seen Shurzad Khan City in a minute. You know, it's been a while since I've seen Shurzad Khan City in chat. He says, Valve Index is awesome for VR. We shouldn't accept anything else for PC VR going forward. Chris says, the base stations is what cranks the price way up and makes it so expensive. Yeah, the base stations and the goddamn controllers. If it wasn't for the base stations and those controllers, it'd be like, wow, the Valve Index isn't that big of it. You know, it isn't that much of a price difference. You know, it isn't, it is like they're not juicing us on the price if you just look at the headset by itself. John Shubrick says, I have to say, 
I noticed a big difference coming from the CV1, but for those jumping from a Vive Pro, a Pimax, an Odyssey Plus, or Rift S, maybe not as much. The overall combined experience is what makes Index special. Now, I don't have the clip here. I would have liked to have had the clip at one point um, Sebastian was comparing it to Pimax. You know, a lot of people were asking him, hey, well, what about Pimax 5K Plus? How do you compare this to the Pimax 5K Plus? Which one is going to be your daily driver? Are you going to use the Pimax 5K Plus every day as you're playing your standard VR games? Or is the Valve Index going to be your daily driver? And I can tell you this, tomorrow, tomorrow on Sunday morning, when we do VR Roundtable, Steve Bishop is absolutely going to be getting into that, I got to imagine. He's probably going to be really thinking about the Pimax 5K Plus against the Valve Index head-to-head. -head. And one of the things that Sebastian talked about here, he talked about the build quality, the overall build quality, and it is a different realm. It is a completely different realm than Pimax, according to him. It's like, you know, it's like you can't even compare it. You know, it's like a freaking Yugo against like a BMW or something. I mean, it's, it's you know, or what was it? Uh, it's like the Camry against the Lamborghini kind of a thing. But the build quality is just otherworldly with the build quality. And so he basically said, look, the only thing, like there's only one thing that the Pimax has over the Valve Index, the 5K+, Plus, and that is that extra FOV that is extending off to the sides there. You're definitely getting extra FOV. But the build quality, the comfort, the quality of the controllers that you're using, although you could use those controllers with the Pimax, so I guess it doesn't really matter there. Um, but ultimately, he said that he believes the Valve Index is going to be his daily driver. And so in the direct comparison with the Pimax 5K+, Plus, basically, ultimately, the bottom line is there's only a couple of downers about the Valve Index. And it, it appears to be like the God Rays are really the only real downer. Another downer might be, you know, he did kind of compare it against the, uh, the Reverb. He talked about the Reverb. And he said, you know, the big problem with the reverb, like the reverb's got problems. The reverb has problems. It's the reason I still have not ordered an HP reverb because of the horror stories I've heard. People are having serious problems with the reverb. The cable is really heavy. He, he also was saying that when you put the reverb on your head, you got to like do all these like weird adjustments to get the reverb dialed in. And then the downside is you see the edges of the reverb screen. Like you're seeing the actual edges of the reverb screen. And while just on a pure raw graphical like a pure graphics horror comparison with that that high resolution screen of the reverb yeah you're going to get better graphics just purely visually speaking but you're seeing the edges of the screen and then you got this heavy cord the cord isn't very long the freaking overheating prop so it's almost like we can't even like the reverb is not even in consideration because it's it's obviously got issues like they need to go back to the drawing board with the reverb people are returning their reverbs so the reverb does not seem to be a good possibility right there. Okay, uh, let, let me go back to chat. Um, Atticon Bell Made Simple says, Anthony! Okay, what are you trying to say, Atticon? Are you trying to say something? I need, um, Rift S without the touch controllers is 259 bucks. Yeah, okay, can we buy the Rift S without the controllers? I don't think we can. Um, Spun720 says, MRTV is live streaming a comparison between something and something, the Index and another headset right now. Yeah, MRTV uh, was going to do a live stream at 1 p.m. And then, of course, uh, what do you call it? F reality ran really long. There's just, a, I mean, there's always going to be other channels going on. I can't really worry about that. So unfortunately, um, Atticon says, okay, okay, I've never bought a VR set. So what do I buy and where do I get it? Atticon, look, here's what I tell you, bro. Okay, wait a minute. If you've got a PlayStation 4 already, maybe just get a PSVR and dip your toes in the waters. Or I think you go with an Oculus Quest. Um, because I'm pretty, Attican, 
I don't believe Attican has like a high-end PC gaming PC. So uh, that would be my suggestion for you, Attican. Get yourself an Oculus Quest. Um, I think this, just the Oculus Quest is such... It is such a great starter headset for somebody new to VR. Um, so that, that would be my thoughts there. Because um, I, I don't believe he has... Uh, and then Phil Yarn says, Anthony, has your index shipped? No. Okay, so let me give you a quick little update. I got one more clip from MRTV uh, to go to. But I did want to mention about... Let's go to... Let me just grab like a miscellaneous Valve Index uh, trailer here. <laughs> I should have some other Valve Index trailers. Like this is kind of... Like I still have the same... So I'm going to put it on some pictures, images old school images of the Valve Index before we had anything to go on. I'll just go ahead and throw it on that real quick. Oh, stop shouting. Apologies. Sometimes I get a little close to the mic here. Okay, so here... Oh, they're telling Attican to stop shouting because he's like all caps in chat. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, bro, get an Oculus Quest. It's all in one. There's nothing else to buy. Unless you already have a PlayStation 4 Pro, maybe get PlayStation VR. And, and you could go on Craigslist, dude. Go on Craigslist and get yourself a PlayStation VR for like 150 bucks because they're out there for 150 bucks. But otherwise, I'd get a Quest. It's all in one. You can take it with you on the go. You you know, you can go on trips. You can bring it with you on your trip. You can bring it from one room to another. There's no freaking wires all over the place cuz I already know. I know who Attican is and I'm almost positive he does not have a gaming PC. So that's why I'm giving him that recommendation here. Okay, but talking about the uh the Valve Index. Um so I was going to do this thing with Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality. God, I really appreciate the fact that the guy was like really going to help me out. He was going to send me his Valve Index, another, well, he got two Valve Indexes, and he was going to send me one without like adding on all these extra fees on top, like to make profit off of it. And I backed out of the deal at the last minute. I got cold feet, partly because the shipping cost for him to ship it to me seemed kind of ridiculous. But, I mean, it was just the way it is. It's a big, heavy box. That's the way it is. You're lucky that you guys get free shipping from Valve. That is a huge thing. Okay, so at the last second, I aborted out of that. And I said, you know what, man? F it. I'm going to go ahead and stick to my original pre-order. I got to wait till July 31st. Yeah, that sucks. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. I'm just going to go ahead and deal with that, right? And so, you know, kind of a shocking thing. It all happened yesterday. It was like a last minute decision. And some people were like, damn, that kind of sucks, man. You kind of screwed over Steve. You know, he was holding it for you, all that, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so right after I finished that show, like minutes after I finished the show, I'm starting to get hit with messages with people saying, dude, I got the email. The email is out there. You can pay for your Valve Index now. And so people are like, I got the email. You know, if you're in the second wave, you can pay for your Valve Index. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. And I jumped into my email and there it was. I had the email from Valve. I got seven days to pay for it. So bam, I went and paid for it. Guess what, folks? So I paid for the Valve Index. Guess what? Here in California... I had to pay where I live here at this particular location of sales tax and all of that. I had to pay $87.41. $87.41 tax for my Valve Index. So it was $1,087. 41 cents because of the goddamn taxation. Taxation without representation. And apparently Tyler Schmitty from uh, from Rendered Reality, Coffee and VR, they just had an episode earlier today, he's going to buy Steve's Index. And I don't think he lives very far away. So hopefully, you know, maybe he doesn't even have to ship it or whatever. But yeah, so Steve is going to, uh, I mean, Tyler from Rendered Reality. So it all works out. It all works out great. Everything works out great. But you know what's funny is, if I knew about the tax, I would have gone through with the deal because with the tax, you know, I didn't know I was going to pay all this extra tax. So I thought maybe it'd be a flat thousand dollars. I got free shipping, you know, so it's almost like I'm paying $200 extra. 
But yeah, so it's crazy, the freaking tax, man. You just never know about the freaking tax. Yeah, I got boned on tax. So Valve probably has a couple, like Valve might have some offices here in California. And so that's why there's tax for me here in California. But other people in different locations, maybe no tax. And so that was kind of a, a screwed up thing right there. But I got one more clip. We've got one last clip from MRTV. And this last clip is about the pass-through capability. Um, it's the pass-through. There is pass-through for the Valve Index. So let's check this clip out real quick. Okay, this is pass-through. I'm going to try a room view now. Can you see that? Can you see, can you see what I see? So here's my television. Well, it's strange. It's screen. Can you see that? So it's like, uh, okay, here's my, here's my webcam and here's like the strange. It's like some kind of predator look. Everything is green. So it's, it's not, I think it's 3D though. It's 3D. Yes. This is more far away. This is closer. But it looks it looks uh, like very low res. Hmm. Yeah, this is my living room, by the way. <laughs> Funny, right? MRTV is being run out of this living room. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that is the pass through. So basically, we get a quick little sample of what the room view mode looks like. And I guess this could be considered another downgrade off of the Rift S. Like if we want to talk about the advantages that the Rift S has on the Valve Index, the biggest advantage, $600 in your wallet. I mean, that's a pretty freaking big advantage right there. Okay, so you get to keep $600 in your wallet compared to the Rift S. Major, major advantage. God rays are probably a little bit less. So the God Rays are a little bit better in the Rift S, another big advantage there. And then the third advantage is the Pass-Through Plus, a lot better than this. Now here's the thing though, Valve maybe has barely started whatever they're doing as far as like the, the little AR cameras that are on the side there. And oh, there's a bong sitting on that table. I didn't know MRTV. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Would, would that be funny though? If you had like a big ass bong sitting in the background or something, you know, because we're he's showing off his living room to everybody here. But um, when you think about the pass-through plus that is on the Rift S, it really is. It really is a nice, uh, yeah. And and in chat, Jarillo or wait, no, it's FF Frank says as long as I can see where my vape is, the pass through will work just fine. Yeah, as long as uh, Sebastian can see where his giant water bong is, which is in the background there, right behind his TV there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but pass through plus on Rift S definitely much better, I think. Although Reckoner VR says I was un unimpressed with pass through plus. Blah, blah, blah. Can I talk? Uh, Reckoner VR was unimpressed with Pass Through Plus on his Rift S. He thought Pass Through on Quest is impressive, all things considered. Yeah, see, my Quest is over there. And I haven't tried it. I still, well, I've tried a Rift S way back at GDC, but I didn't try like everything. I just got a quick little quick demo. And I've never tried Pass Through Plus, but I thought it was better on Rift S than Quest. Like, isn't it even more like stereoscopic compared to what the Quest is? Um, I thought the Pass-Through Plus was even better on Rift S, but I don't know. Reckoner's saying um, on Quest, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, we'll do some bong hits later. That's Slay Blaze. <laughs> um, yeah, just joking about that. But yeah, that was the last clip that I had there of MRTV, just to kind of show you guys the pass-through there. So a few different clips, but overall, it does appear that 
the uh, the Valve Index is a very solid headset and is probably going to be everybody's daily driver. In fact, why don't we check out some of the reviews? We can go to the Webinal because there are reviews now. Uh, Upload VR has their full-on review. Road to VR has their full-on review. So let's go ahead and bounce over here and let's see what some of the people are saying around. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me. Um, I'm going to remove something off of here. So that doesn't pop up on the screen there. Okay, so Valve Index Review. Aiming for PC VR sweet spot and pulling the trigger. Valve Index is in a class by itself. Okay, let's click on this. And do they do they give like a quick hit of positives and negatives? No. Okay, so it's a long involved review. Um, new controllers mean more verbs. Da 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 da. Steam VR uh, tracking attacks or a freedom. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? They had that yesterday. So I guess they had this review yesterday. Um, but they overall say it's very nice. Okay, let's go to Road to VR because they didn't have, we didn't have the Road to VR review yesterday. The Enthusiast Choice. So that's kind of where they break it down. Like ultimately, the final gist of the situation here, folks, is that some people might be a bit disappointed with their Valve Index purchase because they're throwing out this huge giant sum of money and they wanted to get their Valve Index. They wanted to put it on their head and they wanted to be like, oh shit, wow, wow, this is a gigantic difference. This is so much better than every headset I've ever had. That's kind of what people want to experience and you're, you're not really getting that with the Valve Index. With the Valve Index, this is something that over time, over an extended period of time, you're going to appreciate all the nice little subtleties of how the Valve Index is better. It's going to be something that you appreciate over the long haul. Like, for example, MRTV, he was trying the 144 hertz and the 120 hertz. And for the most part, he was saying, you know what? I don't really notice a difference. Like, I don't notice a difference between 144 hertz and 90 hertz or 120. And like, some people are going to notice no difference whatsoever. But I think what they got to remember here, and, and Emmert Sebastian said this himself. He said, but you know what? Maybe if I was playing this game for two hours, that's when I would notice. And the Valve employees, they were talking about this and they were like, look, we're not designing a headset for somebody that plays 30 minutes of VR. We're designing a headset for somebody that spends two hours in VR, three hours in VR, for somebody that is an enthusiast. And that's what Road to VR is saying. They're saying this is the enthusiast choice. So if you're going to be playing Skyrim for two hours, maybe that 120 hertz is going to pay off for you. Because when you come out of that two-hour session, it's not like coming out of a dark cave into bright sunlight and just kind of having that kind of a feel. You know, you come out of it and you might be like, hey, I feel pretty good. You know, I don't have that wear and tear. I don't pay that price of being in a VR headset for a long time. And so I think it's, it's a subtle difference. And so some people are going to be like, like, I don't see what the big deal is, man. It's not a night and day difference. It's going to be a subtle difference. And so that's probably what Ben Lang is going to break down here in his review. Although I bet you he's going to talk about some God rays. He'll actually be, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be talking about that. LCD means worse black levels. And, you know, MRTV did try raw data and he was looking at the back black levels. And he was like, yeah, you know, it's a little bit grayish in terms of the blacks. The, the color pop, all, actually I thought he said the color pop was not as bad as he was expecting it to be. Um, Index offers the widest field of view than other headsets in its class around 120 to 130 degrees. Um, the larger field of view also brings a larger sweet spot, which means the image sharpness doesn't fall off as fast as you look towards the edges of the lenses. Um, 
Unfortunately, see, here's where it goes bad. And this is probably what Reckoner VR will be talking about tomorrow. And Reckoner VR is in or was in chat a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, the new lens design brings quite a bit of glare with it, which illuminates the edges of the lens where there's bright objects against darker backgrounds. At times, this can be as bad, if not a little bit worse, than the original Vive. Ow, that is pretty bad. Because the original Vive did have big time glare especially with like the concentric circle the fresnel concentric circles around the outside like that would catch the glare and make it even worse um, on the original vive uh, the glare seems to concentrate towards the edges of the lens and you can reduce it somewhat by dialing back the field of view a bit but who the hell wants to do that uh, the headphones on the index are simply excellent best of any headset on the market the floating design is a smart way you know so that is awesome so uh you know the sound you know we we kind of know like we kind of know what's going on with this of course now he's getting into the controllers the controllers i haven't talked much about the controllers and from what I'm understanding from most people out there is the controllers are going to take a little bit of time to get used to. In fact, uh, Sebastian was having some problems. He was going into like um, DCS World and like he was going into some different games and some of the games weren't even working with the index controllers. Like maybe he had to go into the options or he had to adjust something. Um so yeah, and he says, in this sense, I liken the index approach to a DSLR camera, more expensive but capable of taking great photos as long as you put in the time to learn the ins and outs and have appropriate hardware to support it. Which means, yeah, you might need a banger of a video card. You know, you might need a very strong video card. Ergonomics for my head. Index is the new bar for headset comfort. Yeah, this is a long, detailed review. You gotta love that about your boy, Ben Lang. A long, detailed review. Like, wow, this is like a long-ass review. And then he goes into the God Rays and Glare. Uh, I want to be clear here because the terminology surrounding what many users called God rays and glare is not particularly precise. So I'm going to explain what I'm talking about with a little extra detail. Okay, let's dive into the weeds here. When it comes to various light-related lens artifacts and VR headsets, there seem to be two major components. The first is what I believe most people are talking about when they say God rays. That would be the lens flare-like light that seems to directly emanate from bright objects against darker surroundings. Um, these lines can be quite defined and typically point directly toward or away from the very center of the lens. You can see them rotate around their host object as you move their head. That would be like a, a black background with just like the logo of the company or the name of the game or whatever. You know, like the credits are rolling and it's just a black background. Those are the classic God rays. Then, of course, you have the glare. Um, and God rays are an improvement over the Vive. Look to be about about on par with the Rift S, but glare is worse than Rift S, Vive, and Vive Pro, and can be pretty obnoxious when you have large high contrast elements against darker backgrounds. So it appeared like that appears to be the Achilles heel. Like if there is an Achilles heel to the Valve Index. God damn, this is a lot. Dude, this is... How many words is this article? And there's page two, bro. This is a freaking epic. This is an epic article. Wow. Here's somebody with a review. Just spent nearly eight hours with mine. Generally disappointed. The SDE is easily visible. Screen door effect. You know what? MRTV talked about screen door effect, actually, a number of different times. MRTV did talk about the screen door effect, and he said that it's not the greatest thing. Uh, the screen door effect is not the greatest thing. Um, Attican, just so you know, guys, Attican is not a V. He's not a, a VR gamer. He's not. He's kind of like a casual dude. He knows me in real life. He's a casual guy that knows me in real life. So ease up on Attican, okay? Ease up on Attican. He's a, actually, we went to high school together. He's a childhood friend. I've known him all my life. 
Attican's cool, don't we? But he's not like he's not a hardcore gamer. He's not a hardcore internet person either. Like so, ease up on Attican. Yeah, he loves the intro nets. Okay, so people are all up in Attican over there. Attican is chilling. But yeah, um, <clears throat> MRTV was talking about screen door, so that is a factor. Okay, let's see. What else can we get into now? Actually, I need to bounce out of here pretty soon. We've been going for about an hour. The last thing I'll do before we bounce out of here is let's take a quick look over here on the daily deals. And so Oculus does have a daily deal. Marvel Powers United, 25% off. Normally 40 bucks, dropping down to 30. So basically $10 off. Eh, you know, looking at all the other sales that are going on all around... Uh, on Steam and and other places as well. No, no, I, I I probably would not go down this road. If you want to spend thirty dollars on a game that is made by Sanzaru Games, wait, wait for Asgard's Wrath. Put that thirty dollars in a bank account. Chill out for a minute when As or or just put it. It's too bad you can't pre-order Asgard's Wrath right now. You put that $30 towards Asgard's Wrath. It's a better idea. Um, raw Data, by the way, is having a free weekend right now. So if you want to play some Raw Digga, it is out there and it is having a free weekend on the Oculus Rift. So that is a possibility as well. Um, and that's pretty much what's going on over there. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. So yeah, I got to get something to eat. I'm starving. It's lunchtime over here in California, and I haven't had any lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce out of here. Um, let me read like a couple of last comments in chat. So Stuart, Stuart Gregerson says, The problem is VR is way too subjective. One reviewer says no SDE. Another reviewer says horrible SDE. One says amazing colors and audio. The next says horrible colors and unacceptable audio. Is there anybody out there, though, that is actually saying unacceptable audio? Uh, I haven't heard anybody say that. But yeah, it is subjective. You know, it is subjective. And you do get people saying... Uh, the only complaint I've ever heard about the audio is one person did complain about like outside noises leaking in. I heard one person complain about that. But for the most part, yeah. And, and then and then the other thing, like the last couple of things I'll say about this before we bounce out of here, when it comes to like judging headsets, comparing this headset to that headset, and, and just that whole thing, man, it, it, it is a deal. And, and there's a couple of things I would like to say to it. Number one, let's not rush to judgment, okay? I know when you get a brand new product, when you get a brand new product, you want to immediately have a take. And you want that take to be a positive take or a negative take. You want to have a take. But the thing is, relax. Chill out. Play with it for a couple of days. Try a bunch of different games. Try a 20-minute game session. Try a two-hour game session. Try a wide variety of different games. Give it some time. You don't have to rush into a judgment. Of course, YouTubers have to rush into a judgment because everybody's waiting for their opinion. But if you're a regular normal gamer, relax. Give it a couple of weeks. Don't fly off the handle in any one particular direction because your opinions are going to change. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. A ride. One minute you're going to be way up here and you're going to be like, oh, it's the best thing ever. Another minute you're going to be experiencing some really bad glare and the controller buttons might seem like they're not in the right spots and you're going to be pissed off. But just relax, chill out. And then some people are just going to be pissed off because they had to pay so much money for it. Ultimately, this is probably the best overall VR headset we have in terms of a mass relatively mass market kind of a VR headset. It's probably the best one we have. But everybody, this is the other thing. We all have different heads. You know, our brows are different. Our cheekbones are different. Our eye sockets like are sunk in or, or not sunk in. And, and we have different IPDs and, and our head sizes are different. Some people have little, little peanut heads and other people have big gigantic watermelon heads. And it varies all over the damn place. 
the one good thing about the Valve Index is I've heard from people that have big ass heads, big OJ Simpson, Mark Cuban heads, and I've heard from other people that have little tiny little Peabody heads, and both of them have said it's ridiculously comfortable. So comfortable, <laughs> comfortable. Uh, but both of them have said that they found it extremely comfortable. So that's a great thing. So it appears like comfort and build quality, like quality of workmanship, like good quality design, you know, that seems to kind of extend across this entire thing. But let's just all back up a little bit. Let's take a few deep breaths. Let's calm down. Let's re let's relax. It would be nice if you could have these headsets for a couple of weeks you play with them for a couple of weeks, and then you make your final decision. Jay Pace says he has a watermelon head, so it kind of sucks for Jay. Uh, but yeah, guys, I got to get the hell out of here because it is lunchtime. I am starving like Marvin. I'll tell you what. You know what? Hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Tomorrow, we've got two different primetime shows for you guys tomorrow morning. First, we start off... VR Roundtable at around 9 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in because Gary's going to have detailed thoughts on what he's thinking about the Valve Index. Steve is going to have detailed thoughts on what he's thinking about the Valve Index. And me and Chris are just going to twiddle our thumbs basically for two hours. Now we'll be asking them questions and talking about that. So definitely tune in to VR Roundtable tomorrow morning. Also, after that is over... I'm going to bounce over to Twitch. I'm going to be twitching it up. And on Twitch tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the best Steam deals that are going on out there. The best values. What are the best values for VR games on Steam? And I'm going to rank the 20 best Steam deals. So we're going to have that tomorrow on Twitch. So twitch it up over there tomorrow. I will not be on YouTube tomorrow. But a lot of good stuff, and there's stuff all around the internet. So many shows, so many live streams, so many podcasts. Uh, raw data, free weekend on Oculus Rift as well. So there's a lot of good stuff going on. So everybody have a wonderful Saturday. I'm going to bounce out of here, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So take it easy. 